Hey, everybody. Come on. Y'all ready to worship the King of Kings? Come on. Yeah, yeah. He is. You can be seated. Please watch our screens. Welcome to Bayou Blue Assembly. Listen closely to hear about our upcoming events. All board member nominations must be turned in today at the Welcome Center. 
And then on Monday, March 6th, we'll be having a board meeting at 6 p.m. And then our business meeting where we will vote on all the nominations at 7 p.m. This Wednesday, February 15th, we'll be having our men's fellowship. Dinner will be at six with service to follow at seven. Also happening this Wednesday, our women are starting their new Bible study, 12 Women of the Bible. We'd love for you to come and join them. This Saturday, February 18th, our Suddenly Alone Grief Support Group will be meeting at 3 p.m. at 100 Westwood Drive. Every Saturday, we have our prayer room right here in the sanctuary from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Come join us for a time of worship and prayer. Beginning next Sunday, we will be adding on our worship service at 8.30 a.m. The only thing that will be offered at this time is our main service. Saturday, February 25th, our youth girls will be having a Painting with a Purpose hangout from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. If you're between the ages of 14 and 18 and want to come, registration is free. You just have to sign up by February 19th. If you are interested in missions, we'll be having a missions trip meeting here at Bayou Blue on March 19th from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. where you can get any information about our upcoming missions trips. All right. Praise the Lord. Excited about all those missions trips. They've got some planned. So if you want to go, please come to that meeting. Also on Tuesday at 10 a.m. is women's prayer right here in the sanctuary. We want to invite all of you to come for that. If you have offerings tonight or tithe, you can put them in our offering and tithe boxes back there. And also you can give online. And last thing is after church today, after church tonight, we need some strong muscles. I see a lot of young ones over there that's got strong muscles, yeah. We need you. When we dismiss tonight, uh, Miss Hannah will be in the Kids Church area and Fellowship Hall, and we're going to set up the tables for the Light for the Lost banquet tomorrow night. If y'all can help us do that, then it'll be so much easier for us to decorate tomorrow. Okay? We can do that? All right. Stand with us. Greet someone tonight. Glad to be here. Thank you. 
Your eyes, they burn, they are all consuming now. Our hearts are yours, you burn fully for you. We remember the price that you paid on the cross. Your love is calling, love is calling. Father, we love you and we praise you. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. Lord, we are pursuing you tonight. You're here in this place tonight. You come, you come for him. You come for Jesus. And I want him tonight. I want him more and more and more in my life. Welcome you here in this place, Holy Spirit. I need you more and more than yesterday. I need you more, more than words could say. I need you. to 
How many of you need them tonight? There's nothing I cannot do without you. Cause I need you more. I need you, Lord. Your breath in my lungs. I need you. Yes, I need you. I need you. Come on, tell them tonight. Say, I need you, Lord. More than anything, I need you. Come on, this is Sunday night. You're here because you don't care about the Super Bowl. And let's just enter in. Can you sing that bridge again, Michelle, that says, We give you the highest praise. Yes, we do. We give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. Jesus. 
Searching for you. Mm. I'm pursuing you, Jesus. Yes, I am. I'm pursuing you, Jesus. And I'm running hard after you. <laughs> yes, and I will praise you. I will praise you. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. I will praise you because something in me has to. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. Yes, I will praise you. I will praise you. I won't let the stones cry. The stronger my faith grows, the higher the need, the higher I'll reach, the greater the cost, the more I believe for, the longer the wait, the longer I'll pray, the stronger the pain. The stronger my faith grows, the higher the need, the higher I'll reach, the greater the cost, 
the more I believe for, the longer the wait, <laughs> the longer I praise, the stronger the pain, the stronger my faith grows, the higher the need, yes, the higher I reach, the greater, the greater the cost, the more I believe for one more time, the longer the wait, oh, the stronger I praise, yes, the stronger the pain, the stronger my faith grows, the higher the need, the higher I reach, the greater the cost, the more I believe for. for miracles yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm believing for miracles we're coming out we're coming out we're coming out we're coming out with you Jesus I believe it we're coming out we're coming out stronger than we've ever been yes I I will praise you. Yes, I will. I will praise you. Because I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. I will praise you. Something in me. about you but no stone's gonna take my place <laughs> I'm gonna praise him until my last breath I'm gonna praise him I will praise you I will I'm gonna praise you every breath that I have yes I will praise you I will praise you. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. I will praise you. Something in me has to. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. surround me 
with the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave You believe that I'm no longer a slave to fear, and I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me, your love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Yes, I am. And I am a child of God. Now, no longer. To fear, and I am a child of God. Yes, I am, and how no longer a slave to fear, because I am a child of God. I'm no longer, and how no longer a slave to fear. Of God, all God's people sing. Oh, 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 So I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. Yeah. You rescue me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. that is in that statement that I am 
a child of God, that when the devil rises up, I'm not stuck out there somewhere wondering what I'm going to do, but I have a father. Oh, come on, somebody. I have a father that looks after me. My God shall never leave nor forsake me. I am his child. And when the devil rises up, I have to take my place with God. I cannot let fear make me run away. I cannot allow anxiety to keep me to turn my head away from my my deliverer but I must press in believing that my God sees me and because he sees me I know I have the petition that I desire I'll give him a hand clap of praise <laughs> glory to you God hallelujah y'all may be seated okay so we're gonna be talking about fear tonight and what we can't allow fear to do. But I, I want us to understand when Paul says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, right? So if there is a spirit of fear, and God didn't give it to us, where then does fear come from? Fear is a demonic force that comes in to kill, to steal, and to destroy and so fear uh, in our flesh is generally a irrational response to something. Because we don't understand something, we're afraid of it. Have you ever noticed that when you don't know what something is? Anybody ever hear a bump at night? And you get up, go get the gun, go, go, go kill somebody. Somebody's breaking in my house, go, go, go. Here recently, I, I was sitting in my attic, not my attic, I was sitting in my living room, I heard in my attic some scratching yeah i don't normally sit in my attic okay unless i'm praying and spending time with god but i heard some scratching and i thought oh man we have a rat yeah, i mean it, it had to be one of those big wood rats you know coming out of the swamp because it's making some pretty good noise so i went and bought me some rat traps and put them up in my attic and i thought okay i'm gonna give it a couple of days you know i went to alexandria came back and uh probably I guess Thursday, I crawled up into the attic to, to check my traps. And man, this, I, I grabbed the trap and this rat just turned me over. I almost fell through the ceiling. Well, that's a lot better story than what happened. <laughs> I picked that little mouse up on that trap. And somehow my foot slipped and I twisted and fell. And I'm trying not to drop it into the insulation, you know, and so, and so I'm not letting go of it because I'm hard-headed. And I have scratches all up and down my leg, on my shoulder, because I refuse to let go of that little bitty mouse trap because I didn't want that rat mouse to get away. It was dead. But I don't want no mouse getting on me. I ain't scared of them. I killed it. But I didn't want it touching me nasty little rats i had two of them actually i had two traps had two mouse mouses dead mices mouses mooses i got them but how many of y'all know you, you have a mouse run across your house got a mouse in a house women usually run we had one up down the body in our other house we put 14 traps out Amanda in her room woke up in the middle of the night and said the little mouse stood up and looked at her. <laughs> Jumped over the little trap and looked back at her and walked out of the room. She said, that mouse is defying me, Daddy. We have to get it. But she didn't jump out of bed to go kill it. She said, oh, no, I ain't messing with that thing. I need you to kill it. But fear, I I've seen people so afraid of frogs. Our pastor's wife in Eunice wrecked her car going across the road she wasn't going fast but a frog on the outside windshield all she could do was let go of the steering wheel and scream <laughs> right into the ditch called her husband by the time he got there uh the frog was still there he knocked it off the car and then she got she wasn't getting out that frog wasn't getting her that it was a, i guess it was a poisonous deadly she wasn't taking a chance. That frog wasn't touching her. But fear sometimes, irrational fear can grip us. Now, as a believer, 
We have to understand that fear does not belong in our lives. I mean, I'm going to tell you, the devil will make you believe all kinds of stuff. And he doesn't have to have evidence to do it. All he has to have is an innuendo. All the devil needs is a way for you to say, well, I don't know, maybe. Maybe it's going to be worse. You know, I, I've shared before where I've heard people say, you know, man, I'm having really severe headaches. You know, they start here and go to here, and I'm not really sure. And someone said, well, I know somebody died of cast cancer. They died of it. Why well, we got to go there? Right? We, we go from I got a headache to you're dying of cancer, and by the time you get to the doctor, you don't know what's going on. And I, I know people who will allow that fear to, to grip them, and, and they won't go to a doctor because they're afraid of what the doctor's going to say. There are people who won't ask for prayer because they're afraid of, 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 if I ask for prayer, what will people think? And, and so this fear comes upon us, but, but we have to understand that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But, but there is a fear that comes upon us that is completely demonic that we have to understand. The devil comes suddenly. He shows up and he, he tries to, to frighten you when you're not expecting him to show up. And, and, and he's really good at that. He's really good at showing up. And, and when you're not sure what's going on, the devil will, will start bombarding you with different thoughts, you know. See, I don't know if y'all know this, but the devil can actually put thoughts across your mind. How many of y'all know that? The devil will speak against your mind and tell you. Uh, my dad used to say the devil will tempt you in one ear and then accuse you in the other right he'll come against you and he'll say you know i really ought to just go do this and and then the devil says, i can't believe you even thought about that and then we think man i ain't worth nothing i might as well just give up isn't that the devil though y'all you know i mean y'all say how do you know pastor because i've had to fight that rascal he's come against me and he's he's lied to me but then he puts that fear of well what if i'm not able what if i'm the guy that i'm just i'm doomed to live this life i'm doomed to struggle in these areas because i'm not good enough to break it off there's something mentally or physically or emotionally i'm damaged and broken and i can't be fixed now that's a lie that brings fear from the enemy that tells you you might as well quit but the bible says i am what more than a conqueror through christ jesus which means the devil doesn't get the final say in my life he doesn't get to speak lies into my mind the bible tells us to take every thought into captivity that would exalt itself above the knowledge of god why do you think it's so important for you to hide the word in your heart so that you won't sin against God, so that you can know what is God's Word saying to us. What does God's Word tell us about ourselves, about our situations, about our, our health? What does the Word of God tell us about our past and our future? If you don't understand what God says, how can you take a hold of those thoughts that the devil's bringing against you and put them under the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ, under the, the work he's already done? When we say under the blood of Jesus Christ, what we mean is that Jesus went to the cross and died for our sin so that we could be restored into right standing with our father so he could look at us and we would be justified you can break that down to just as if i'd never sinned justified see that's what we are god's blood was shed on calvary to wash away not to cover up our sins the blood of bulls and goats covered it up the blood of jesus washed it clean no longer are those things a part of us. So it's a process of me allowing myself to learn the Word of God, then to begin to claim those things as my new truth. Because the old truth is the truth for the old man, but not for the new man. The new man, the new child of God, the new creature in Christ Jesus, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become brand new. And so this is a process that I have to get myself into because the enemy's going to come to rob your blessing. Now, he's not going to come to rob your blessing until after God gives you a promise to believe. 
The minute you believe something that God said, then the devil comes to steal it. You say, well, how do you know? Because there was a sower that went out to sow. And he threw some seed out, and some fell by the wayside. And immediately the devil came and stole the seed. I'm not guessing at this. Jesus prepared us for this. In the parable of the sower, he said, hey, immediately upon the seed hitting your heart, the devil's coming to take it. Immediately. Why do we act surprised when the devil shows up? Why do we allow him to jump us in the parking lot before we ever even get home? Why do we allow those old thoughts back in? Well, because we're weak. And we're not preparing ourselves to fight against the enemy. We're not ready to go to war. I'm working on a message right now. It's pay attention. There's a war going on. I'll be preaching it pretty soon. But we have to understand that you know, the devil is not here to give you a bad day. He's here to destroy your life and to cause you to slip away from God and into hell. That's what the devil desires to do. But he cannot as long as I'm holding on to Jesus. If I have a promise from God, the devil does not have the authority to take that away from me. Now, let me tell you, it doesn't mean you're not going to go through some really bad battles. Come on, somebody, anybody going through a bad battle after you're saved? Yeah, after. I wasn't in a battle till after I got saved. Pastor Dylan, you know what I was doing? I was enjoying my sin. I wasn't battling against it. I was trying to find more ways to fulfill it. The battle doesn't start until we become saved. My dad helped me with that one day because I lost my temper and said some words I shouldn't have said, threatened a guy's life, told him I was going to kill him, all un, un, unchristian-like stuff. And I'd been witnessing to him about Jesus for weeks. And in one moment, boy, I just blew it. I went to him afterwards and apologized for threatening to kill him. He said, didn't bother me. I said, it should have, because I was serious. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good apology, but it's all I had. I got home, told my dad, I'm not even saved. He said, why? So I told him, he said, well, before you got saved, did it, w would it bother you to threaten? I said, I'd have slapped him. He said, but it bothers you now? I said, yeah. He said, well, something must have happened, son. And a light went on. But the devil blocked the light until I had someone speak over it. That's why you shouldn't hang around with heathens. They're not going to speak light over your stuff. They're going to agree with the devil because they don't know no better. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I've seen people go down that same road. You might as well just give up. You need a Christian who's going to say, you know what? We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Don't let go. Oh, okay, yeah. But as soon as my dad spoke that to me, it made sense. Yeah, something is different. I'm, I'm battling and I'm struggling, and I'm honestly feeling really bad about bad choices. It doesn't mean it's okay to keep having bad choices. It means that God's doing something. Don't let the devil lie to you and put fear in you and cause you to turn around and quit. Because after all, how many times have you been successful? Never. I always keep failing, so obviously I'm going to keep on failing. That's not true. You're going to keep on failing till you don't. And then you're going to win. And then the devil will come after you another way. He's not going to stop. You're going to go from victory to victory to glory to glory. You're going to follow the path of God. And it's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be absolutely. Yo, I've come so far, and, and fear wants to, to grab me. And, and it's the fear that, that I would justify at times, well, I'm just being humble and, and, and honest. I'm just not worthy, Jesus. Who knows what makes you worthy? Y'all said Jesus. Jesus makes you worthy. You're not worthy because you did something good. I don't care if you grew up in church all your life and the worst thing you ever did was told a lie to your mama. One time. Never, never did anything else wrong. One, I don't believe you. But, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
I don't care who you are, what you've done, or what you've accomplished. Every one of us has to stand and come through these battles. There are battles that you're going to deal with. The scripture we're going to read is dealing with the woman with an issue of blood. And, and, and it's not her, it's Jairus who started the story off as Jesus got off of a boat. Starts down through Magdala and he's, he's walking around. I love uh, when we went to Israel, uh, we, we had a chance to go to Magdala. Magdala, they excavated down to the actual 2,000-year-old stone uh, road that went through the town, which Jesus walked on. Come on, y'all. They had a synagogue there that they had excavated down. It's one of the very few that, that was intact. Once they got everything cleared out, the actual stone that the teacher would stand on to read the Torah was there. Jesus stood on that spot, on that stone. I'm telling you, it's just, wow, you know. <laughs> and, and we know because the Bible says he taught in all their synagogues. So I know that he taught in that place. And we could feel the presence of God there. You could. Janet was there. Some of you, who else was there? Tammy's back there. She was there. There was so, all of Israel was cool, but that place, I felt God. It was just special. But this is where they believed that Jesus walked through and the woman with an issue of blood pushed through the crowd. She fought through the crowd. But, but Jesus is on a mission. When, he, when, when she gets there, he's already on a mission. Anybody ever had Jesus give you a promise and then he's touching everybody but you? Mm -hmm. How's that fair? Right, And so then you start thinking, well, maybe it's because I'm unworthy. Maybe because I'm not something I should be. That's why God's not blessing me. I mean, look at AJ. AJ's all blessed. How come I ain't blessed? You know? Well, AJ's going, don't get me up in this. I ain't done nothing. <laughs> but it's true. People begin to look around and see other people that are blessed. You know, God gives all that, all that anointing and all that talent to Cohen. He don't deserve that. I thought I'd throw you in there while we had it. But see, the enemy comes in and starts to stir those things and say, well, look, this is going on here, and this is going on here, and look at your little old raggedy life. life. You ain't got nothing. And then what we do, we start feeling sorry for ourselves, don't we? Poor, pitiful me. We get on our little pity party with our little violin. <laughs> and we want everybody to know, hey, it's just ain't fair, Pastor. I've gone through all this heartache. I'm, no one's ever suffered as much as me. <laughs> Y'all, we got to wake up. That ain't true. These people suffered so bad. I got friends that have gone through so much. But it's not a, it's a fact. You know, I love what Brother Mikey said when, when I mean, you know, he was dying of cancer. He had, I mean, massive cancer in his chest. And he quit taking the treatments because he said, God's going to heal me or I'm going to heaven. I ain't taking that, that stuff no more. I'm not. He knew inside it was time to let go. And it didn't immediately manifest. He got worse. And I'm sure his wife was praying, God, <laughs> anytime now, be great. You know, it's like there's three Hebrew children. They're walking toward the fire. I'm sure they're praying, hey, you know, God, we stuck up for you. Uh, uh, you should need to show up here. But God did show up for Brother Mikey. But he never let go. When people say, how are you doing? He said, I'm blessed beyond the curse. Well, yeah, but how do you feel? I'm blessed beyond the curse. Other people getting healed. My dad prayed for people who had uncurable diseases, incurable diseases, that God healed just like that. My daddy never walked in healing on this side of heaven. He prayed with people with problems, rheumatoid arthritis, a bad heart. He'd lay hands on people that were dying, and they'd be healed completely. And he'd go home hurting still. You, you, ever, you ever wonder, God, how, how, come, how come you don't heal the healers? How come Jesus didn't come down off that cross? It wasn't God's plan. You're walking in God's plans at the step of a just man ordered by God, and you are saved. That means you're just. You're justified, remember, by faith. So because you're justified by faith, then you are just. And so the steps of a just person are ordered by God. So if God's ordered your steps and you're walking through hell, stop complaining. God brought you there. He didn't bring you there to leave you to die. He brought you there to have victory, not just for you, but for the people around you. Can I tell you that people are watching you? When people see a real Christian going through difficulties, and they're going through it with a smile and a confidence that I'm getting through this, it does something to them. 
They see what they got. The world knows what they got. But when they see somebody that has something different, who is actually believing it and living it, it changes something inside of them, and it begins to cause them to want to search out God. And so here, this uh, Jairus is, is, is getting Jesus. He fell down before him. He said, would you come pray? My daughter's home dying. Jesus said, sure, let's go. But then the people just thronged Jesus. They just, just corralled him. And then this woman comes through and touches him, and Jesus stops everything he's doing. He doesn't understand the importance of the hurry. Isn't that something that God doesn't understand how desperate you are, does he? God, don't you understand? Look at my situation. It's desperate. Don't stop at that. She's an old bleeding woman. Leave her alone. She shouldn't even be out here anyway. And God, Jesus says, yeah, everybody stop. Somebody touch me. I can see the apostles. <laughs> yeah, duh. <laughs> You're surrounded by people. Sure, somebody touched you. He said, nah, power left me. In the middle of Jesus coming to take care of you, he's not limited in taking care of other stuff. Oh, aren't you glad? I'm so glad that my God's not limited to one at a time. And so as soon as he deals with her, he's getting ready to go on, and a servant showed up from Jairus' house, uh, Luke 8, 49. While he yet spake, there came one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Now, I'm going to tell you all something. That is crazy talk. Everybody knows that when they're dead, it's too late. I mean, everybody knows when it's just gone too far. There's, there's, it's just too much. I'm sorry, God. It's too much. Really? Is it? Is it really too much? Is it really gone too far for God to intervene? Lazarus was dead four days. Was it too late? Mary and Martha thought it was. But Jesus didn't. Jesus just stepped up and declared. You see, one of the things that I've learned over the years is my fear will demand of me to accept that it's too late. My fear will cause me to say, well, you know, I wish I could, but... I shared this morning that I tried to disqualify myself from being able to serve God by really bad choices that I made so that then God wouldn't want me to serve him in a place of leadership so then I could just sit on the back row, no, no offense, sit on the back row and do nothing. But God didn't let me do that. Matter of fact, God taught me that I wasn't called because I was qualified. I was qualified because he called me. That was my qualifications, not me, him. God qualifies the call, but you've got to trust him. So here we see Jarius with, with uh, two things he has to decide. He has to decide in this moment whether he's going to believe what the servant said or is he going to believe what Jesus said. Now you may think, well, yeah, but that's different. It's not different. Each of you have a word from God from something in your life. God has either spoken to you in your heart, you've read the word and God gave you a promise through reading the word you've been clinging on to it for god knows how long i, I have no clue some of y'all have been holding on to promises for years believe in god that what he promised you then is going to come to pass and every now and then you have to remind yourself that now god promised me this i one of the reasons i kept getting up and coming back here during the storm was because god already spoke to me about doing more stuff about building a bigger building he'd already put those things in my heart so i knew that god wasn't done i knew that the devil trying to discourage me was nothing more than a lie i refused to let fear grip me and cause me to begin to say oh i just don't know maybe maybe god's done with me maybe god wants me to get out of the way maybe god is is trying to shake me loose from here and then the, the enemy's just amening me the whole time he just shouting to victory. Yeah, God wants you to go because God's done with you. 30 years, that's too long. You need to let somebody better than you get in here. And I'm just agreeing with him. He's amening me. But then God said, what did I call you to do? It wasn't to build this building. 
He said, I've called you to more. And I just know that God didn't, I'm so thankful that God didn't give me that vision after the storm. Because then I'd have thought, I'm just delusions of grandeur here. It's, it's, it's done, you know, look at this thing. He gave me that, that desire and that dream and that vision way before COVID, before the storm. And I know that God put that in my heart. I know that God called me to that. And so I know that the devil's not going to stop us. The devil's not going to be able to, and though fear wants to rise up at every turn when there's a new twist going on, you know, uh, talk of an insurance company going bankrupt and leaving the state, talk of, uh, of, of people that, that you know, they're, they're, they're not allowing, not giving the money, and you just got to deal, all the fear-mongering of all the people, and I just say to myself, God, this is your money, not mine. God, this is your building, not mine. God, this is your ministry, not mine. And God, you called me to this. I never saw this. I never desired anything beyond just being in your presence. So God, I give it to you and I lay it in your hand. Jarius had to come to that place where he said, okay, my, this guy's telling me that he came from my house. He saw my daughter and she died. Here this Jesus, this, this, this prophet is telling me that I shouldn't fear that she's dead. I need to believe in his word. So what am I going to do i'm going to tell you right now i'm going to grab a hold of some faith i'm going to grab a hold of something that's outside of me i don't want to hang on to fear i don't want to hang on to doubt and the devil's going to speak those things and the word that the devil spoke i'm certain all the way to jerry's house i don't know why you're believing they told you she was dead they just came from here jesus wasn't here he don't know what happened to her this guy saw what happened to her what are you talking about you're going to go and believe God to do a miracle what's wrong with you isn't that what the devil says to you how dare you think that God can do something special for you but I'm holding on I'm fear not believe only in Jesus Christ Yeah, that is where power and that is where the presence of God shakes off fear when fear rises up because all of a sudden you got that bad report when they tell you it's cancer all of a sudden, man, all the thoughts come flooding in. And you hear what God says, hey, you're going to live and not die. And you got to begin to think, okay, well, hang on, God. People die of cancer all the time. I mean, they're not lying. I know something's wrong, so I went to the doctor. I go to the doctors because I'm half dead. Because other than that, I don't go. <laughs> I'm believing God for miracles. I want no doctor touching me. But I'm believing and I'm praying and, and you know, I, I just want God to do some, 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 some supernatural something. And Jerry is, is on his way home with Jesus. And, and I know he's battling inside. He wants to believe for the supernatural. He wants to believe God that I can be normal. He wants to believe God that I can be more than, than I ever thought I could be. That I could actually be used by God. That God actually loves me. He's not mad at me. He's not punishing me. He's not trying to destroy me. But God loves me. Can I believe that? Can I really believe that God God's power and his presence can walk with me daily. Y'all, if you don't, fear is going to grip you. Fear is going to cause you to stumble and fall. But you've got to begin to say something on the inside of you. You've got to listen to what God said, and you've got to not let fear grip you. Instead, you've got to determine that God's the one that called me, and God's the one that keeps me. If God chooses to take me home, I'll go home. If he chooses to leave me here, I'll keep on fighting till he calls me home. But i got news for you. Unless the rapture happens, every one of us is going to die. Oh, come on, shout now. We're all going to die. Not in 30 minutes, I hope. But we're all going to go by way of the grave if the, if the rapture tarries. It is appointed and the man wants to die. Why do you let the fear of death kill you? It kills us while we're alive. We're the walking dead. We walk around thinking, well, I just don't know if I can. I'm not any good. And, da, 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 da. and God's saying, where are you going to listen? Fear not. Believe only. And something great can happen. Jesus got to her, the house and, 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 and he had to tell, he told me, look, she's not dead. She's sleeping. They laughed him to scorn. These were the mourners. You used to have professional mourners. How many of y'all know that? 
They would hire people to come in and mourn for the family. How would you like that to be your job? I know some folks who could do it. They just mourn for you, you know. Whoa! Makes them feel better. You know, I got a good man. I had three jobs this week. Boy, I'm feeling really good now. Got all that cry out of me. I wouldn't be a good mourner. I'd be saying, "Okay, guys, we done. We just start now. Come on, man." But there's people. There were professional mourners would come in and mourn with the family, so the family could feel good about all the hurt and the pain. Because you want other people to. Because you know, misery loves company, right? And so Jesus walks in and says, she's not dead, she's sleeping. They laughed him to scorn. Oh, you're like, you know what you're talking about. Like you're some kind of a doctor. No, I'm God in flesh, but it's okay. <laughs> not a doctor. I have a joke, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but, but Jesus walks in, puts everybody out, but, but Peter, James, and John. He says, everybody get out. He said, y'all watch. He said, little girl, get up. She got him. He said, y'all give her something to eat. She's okay. She got up, and Jarius and his family had a daughter restored. But what if he just said, I just can't believe that, God? They said she's dead. She's dead. Then he didn't, he'd have buried his daughter instead of giving her something to eat. If you don't choose to believe God, you're going to get what you believe. You're going to get the negative. So, so fear, as an as a, a anagram, broke down. It can either mean forget everything and run. So that's, one of the, that's one, what's something you can do. You can forget everything that you know about God and just run, fear. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people, they read the Bible and they quote them scriptures, got scriptures typed around their house until the devil hollers, boo! And then they run out of the house screaming. I've heard people praying for people to be set free and delivered from demons and demon manifest, and they leave the house as fast as they can run and, and say, God, hey, yours now. I made a manifest. I'm gone. Why? Because they got afraid because they weren't ready to deal with no real demon. When people, people think that a real exorcist, exorcism, they take some holy water, throw on them, they go to boiling up with their skin, and then the old devil comes out. Now, that's not what demon possession is. And when you face a demon and you say, okay, devil, we want you to come out now. And the devil says, no. And you go, oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to check you later. <laughs> yeah. He's in a bad mood today. Let's come back tomorrow. <laughs> Why? Because fear, fear will grip you. And fear is this demonic spirit that gets a hold to us. I'm not talking about a healthy respect for stuff i don't think anybody i ain't afraid of that 18 wheeler driving 80 miles an hour i'll stand right in front of it no that's just dumb physics is real and that truck hits you you're gonna be seeing jesus saying i thought you was gonna protect me and he said i did i gave you a brain <laughs> did all i could do to protect you from stepping in front of that truck but you pushed right past everything i gave you to show that you're not as smart as I thought you were. Anyway. So we see ourselves coming to that place. And, and so I can forget everything that I've learned from God. And just run. And there are people that will do that. People in church do that because it's just too much. They just, they just can't because the fear so overwhelms them. They're like uh, Timothy was when Paul had to tell him, Hey, Timothy, God didn't give you that spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Don't let the fear steal that from you. And so you can choose to forget everything that you know and run, or you can choose to face everything and rise up. You can choose to face everything that comes against you and allow your, your faith to cause you to rise to the next level and the next level. I love the story of the eagle. You know, they, there was a story told that this eagle fell out of a, the sky, got hurt, hurt its wing, and, and fell out of the sky. And a farmer found the eagle and had it in, in his, with his chickens, you know, and had a little strap tied around it because he didn't want it killing his chickens. And so had it in there, and that, that old eagle had been there for quite some time, and, and it got to where he was scratching in the ground just trying to get up something to eat because it just, you know, and it would try to stretch its wings, but it just really couldn't take off. And one day, uh, it was, the eagle was there, and the farmer saw this shadow, and the shadow came across the chicken coop, and it looked up, and it was an eagle way, way up in the sky. And the eagle was circling. 
It says that eagle circled the the eagle that was on the ground was was just kind of was noticing this and and started moving its wings back and forth. But it said that that eagle kept coming down and it was circled lower and lower and lower till finally when it passed the other eagle, its wing reached down and touched it. And when it did, the other eagle broke. It just jumped and tore, ripped that peg out of the ground and took off and started flying. It started following that other eagle and went high, high, high. And he said they looked at that and wondered, well, what kept the eagle from doing that all the time? I mean, it, it, here it is, all of a sudden it takes off. But I'll tell you what makes the difference is it found out it wasn't alone. It found out that it wasn't just, it wasn't a chicken. And sometimes I think we, we get so tied up in being with chickens, we forget that we're eagles. We forget that we're, we're supposed to soar. When the winds come, the chickens hide. But the eagles soar. Eagles take that wind that will destroy everything else, and they use it to lift them up to the highest places. The, the wing, eagle's wings will cause it to soar above the storms, and, and it doesn't even have to flap. All it has to do is just tilt the wings a little bit, and up it'll go. And I'm telling y'all, you need to understand that you're not alone. You need to understand that there is a God Almighty that's following you and loving you and wanting to bring you there. But you got to be willing to face what's going on. You got to stop making excuses. You got to stop hiding. You got to stop running. You got to stop allowing the enemy to make you make bad choices because fear has you so bound up that you can't step out because you're so afraid of failing and so you won't even take a chance let me tell you something you've already failed if you're not even willing to take a chance you might as well just go ahead and get out go out there and just start stepping what's the worst that can happen that you stumble trying to obey god i mean really is that the, what worse can god's not going to throw you away because you tried to follow God's not going to get mad at you because you tried to obey. But see, as long as you're dependent upon you, then you're going you're gonna to always forget everything else you know and run because you're just not ready for the battle. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't like running. I know Corey likes to run. I learned how to fight so I didn't have to run. I, I tried running. I was going to run a marathon. I was going to train to run a marathon. I ran a mile and quit. I said, that's just nuts. <laughs> now, I, I guess I probably could have tried. I was 300 plus pounds, and I probably could have lost some weight and done a little bit better. But I'm going to tell you all now, at 300 pounds, I ain't running no marathon. <laughs> it ain't happening. But if God told me to, you know what I would do? I'd start losing weight, and I'd start training. And I wouldn't try to run a marathon tomorrow. I'd be nine months trying to get ready to run a marathon, crying every day, <laughs> making my fat cry. That's what sweat is. Sweat's your fat crying, guys. Come on. We have to learn that I'm going to face everything, and I'm going to soar. I'm going to face everything that comes my way, and I'm going to rise up above it because I'm not letting the devil rob me and steal from me. When Jesus was with the apostles on the lake, he had told them, I want to go across. You, it's uh, Luke 8, 23 through 25. I'm not going to read it, but y'all can write it down. Jesus had told them, hey, y'all, let's go to the other side. And then he went down and went to sleep. Can I tell you that sometimes God is pulled back, but he's not gone? Sometimes he doesn't speak, but it's not because he's not there. It's because he's ready for you to cry out. Jesus has taught the apostles. He had taught the disciples. He'd fed them all this. And they, they fed 5,000 with a few loaves and a few fish and had 12 basketfuls when they were done. They get on board the ship. He says, let's go to the other side. Wind starts blowing. The, the, and, and, and on the Sea of Galilee, bad windstorms can come up just like that. They come out of nowhere over the Golden Heights. That wind comes blowing in there. And, and it could be a bright, sunshiny day. And I mean, in an instant... It can turn into, into riptides and the, the waves blowing. And they said that still today on the Sea of Galilee, that can happen when you're out to sea. Suddenly out of nowhere, unpredicted, this crazy wind can show up and it, it can almost crash a boat. 
And you think about their boats then and, and their inability to do some things and said it was taken on water, right? And they ran panicking, Jesus, we're going to die. And Jesus walked up to the bow of the boat, not upset, didn't say he ran up there panicking. He walked up there and said, peace be still. And it went boom. Then he looks at them. And I, and I know they're looking going, oh my goodness. It's something about this dude. And he, but it says in verse 25, and they being afraid. They being afraid wondered, what kind of man is this? I want you to understand something that, that when God does something in your life, you don't be afraid. Don't let fear grip you because all this stuff can happen. You're praying for God to intervene. And when something starts happening, don't be afraid. Don't think, well, God did a little something, but now i got to make everything else happen. He didn't put any responsibility on them to continue to stop the storm. He stopped it. But then he looked at them. He said, where's y'all's faith? So they didn't have faith in the middle of the storm. How many times do you find yourself there? I'm great till the storm rises. I'm talking about all that Jesus did for me right up here till the wind starts. I mean, he just fed all those people with a little bit of food. I mean, we can package that. We can make some money. I don't know what the disciples were talking about. I don't, but I mean, they were in awe about what he was doing. And I'm sure they're like us. They figured some way to make a profit out of it. I mean, they got people selling uh, pieces of the cross, toothpicks. Like anybody got a clue where the cross was or they got toothpicks of it. Selling an anointing oil that God has blessed. And people giving, throwing money. My favorite one is, if you will send me $1,000, I will pray for you. <laughs> Save your money, I'll do it for free. And you're not getting one bit more prayer. And it's not, you're not going to, I so many, you know, Pastor, I, I can't pay my tithe. I gave it to this preacher on TV because I wanted my debt to be broken. So instead of paying your tithe, you gave it to a shyster. Because he promised you that you'd get rich and you could pay your tithe back. You know. Whew. Don't do it. You know what makes people do that? Fear. There's so much debt they don't know what to do, so they, they want a, 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 a panic mode, send their money so that they can get something quick. You know, it's like going to a casino with you know, all I got is this hundred dollars. I could either pay a bill with it, but what if I bet it on something and I can get a thousand? Man, then I can get caught up. What do they do? They they bet the hundred. And now they can't pay that bill either. Your house always wins, y'all. That's the way it's set up to do. That's why they, they all got money. And so we, we had, but what makes somebody willing to do that? It's fear. It's fear of facing their loved ones because they lost everything. It's the fear of having to, to face the fact that they blew it and they can't justify what happened. That's why, why do people go out and get drunk instead of facing the, st the struggle that's coming against them? It's because they're, they, they're afraid that they're not going to be able to deal with it, so they just give up and go get drunk. Because you know what, when I'm drunk, I don't care. Problem is, you sober up. And now you've got to deal with that. So fear, fear causes us to make bad choices. You can't do that. The disciples were made, I mean, they were panicking. Jesus, don't you even care that we're dying? They were making great assumptions for no reason because they didn't trust God. We got to come to that place, guys, where we're not making those bad choices. There are, are families that are going through divorce because the husband messed up and doesn't believe the wife could really forgive him or vice versa. They're afraid because if I, if, if, if I try to reconcile, they're going to wind up getting even, and I can't live with that. I messed up, and there's no way to make it right, so I'm just going to walk away from this. It's fear. Fear because they don't believe they can really forgive them. They don't really believe they're going to be reconciled. They don't really believe it's going to be better. They just have decided it's just going to be bad no matter what. I might as well be bad somewhere else where I ain't got to deal with this. But, yeah, that's what fear does. Fear comes along and it robs that. What do we do? By faith. 
By faith, I step into that situation and I say, you know what? By faith, I'm not going to do that dumb stuff today. Today. I can't give no account for tomorrow, Jesus, because you said not to give any thought to tomorrow. I'm only going to think about today. And today, I'm going to slam my hand in the door before I do that. Today, I'm going to call a Christian brother or sister before I make that choice. Today, I'm going to get on my face and weep and cry before you before I get into that. Today, I'm, I'm not going to have to cry the rest of my life. I'm not going to have to slam my hand the rest of my life. I'm not going to have to, to do bad uh, the rest of my life. I, I can't deal with the rest of my life. I'm going to deal with right now, today. If you do that, you'll win. Because then fear can't get a hold to you. Because I can make one day. How many of y'all think you can make one day? We've all made one day, unless you haven't tried yet. I don't know if I can make a day. When I fasted coffee for 21 days, that first day, I wasn't sure. Maybe I needed some tea, Coca-Cola or something, a little caffeine buzz. I didn't. I said, no, I ain't going to touch it. I'm, I'm not going to try to cheat Jesus. He told me to do this. I'm going to do it. And he already knows if I'm going to cheat. I didn't cheat. I didn't find any caffeine, anything. To knock the, I, I did take an Advil, though, I'll, I'll be honest, because my head was busting. Did I say that right or wrong? Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not hip. My head was busting open. They, I know they laugh at me all the time. Not to my face usually, but they do. But we find ourselves there, don't we? We find ourselves making bad choices because of fear. In Psalms 23, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, this is a, a very familiar verse for most of us. You know, the 23rd Psalm, you know, for me it is a, it is a story of a Christian's life. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. He's my shepherd. A shepherd is a provider and a protector. I shall not want. He leads me. He maketh me lay down in green pastures, which means he brings me to a place of nourishment. He leads me beside the still waters. He brings me to a place where I can drink and, and be refreshed from, from a hard day. He restores my soul. Y'all, that right there is worth the price of admission. God will restore your soul. What the devil's done to destroy you, God can restore in you. What you didn't think would ever come back, what you thought was lost forever because of your choices, he restores your soul. He brings it back and he puts it back together. He restores your soul. Janet, you can come. I'm getting ready to close. He can restore your soul. But y'all, you know that there, there's a drastic shift in this, in this uh, psalm. He says he leads me beside still waters. That, that terminology... Brother Pat says, he gently beckons me. Okay, then the next verse we're going to talk about is, he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. He leadeth me beside still waters. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. Same thing, right? No. That one means he strongly compels me in paths of righteousness. Totally different thing, Right? gently beckon once your soul has been restored once you're in relationship with god once you're in that place with god now he strongly compels you to do what's right he strongly compels you he says stop sometimes god will shake you <laughs> what's wrong with you my answer is i don't know that's my kid it worked for my kids for years I don't know. God says, what's wrong? Hey, don't you know who I, I've saved you. I've met your needs. Now you obey me because now you represent me. I walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no. That word fear there means give respect to. 
I'm not giving respect to evil. I'm not going to bow myself. That's what it is. Like you walk into the presence of a king and you bow yourself. That's what that's talking about. Are you going to bow yourself to fear? Are you going to bow yourself to evil? No, I'm not. I will not fear evil. Why? Because thou art with me. He's with you. Right now, right here, God's with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. That's not a gentle little, oh, poor little me, little me. That is a, a, a shepherd running after the lion, smacking him in the head, pulling the sheep back into the sheepfold, saving and delivering and helping. Thy rod and thy staff, they, comfort, they give me strength and courage. It comforts me. It's like when someone who is big and powerful says, you don't have to worry about it. They show back up here to mess with you. I got you. Makes you feel good because you know they mean it. You know, I gave my mother-in-law a pistol for Christmas one year. My brother-in-law asked me had I lost my mind. But I tell you what, of all the people in the world, if I needed somebody on my side, I want my mother-in-law on my side. Because she's for real gangster, y'all. Y'all see Jenna just smiling. She ain't shook her head no, did she? No, her mama would be gangster. She is. You don't want to roll up with her. I'm telling you, she don't fight fair. But she on your side, you can know this. You ain't going to be left by yourself. You know, because God's with you. I felt that way about Mike and Shireen when they, they looked me in the eyes and said, if y'all need us, we'll move to Homo. We got you. I'm going to tell y'all, something inside of me rose up. And I said, yeah. We're going to make this. Because I got warriors coming that don't mind cutting the devil's throat. His rod and his staff that comfort us. He prepares a table before us. In the, Miss Elaine, is there anything better than a prepared table? I'm not talking about a table got to be fixed up. But God said, I got the table ready. Come sit down. I know all your kids be saying, whoo-hoo, mama said it's time to eat. <laughs> Why? Because the table's prepared. I hadn't got to do anything. All I got to do is go sit down and shove food in my face. God says, I want you to know in the middle of all this, with all your enemies snapping at you, with all this fear trying to get you, I have prepared for you a place of nourishment and strength. My table is ready. He said, he anoints my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy. Those are my angels. Surely, goodness and mercy. Those are my angels. They, they follow me everywhere that I go. And I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because I know that Jesus went away to prepare a place for me. And if he went to prepare a place for me, he's going to come back and get me. See, that's why I'm not afraid of the devil. That's why fear is not going to rob me of who God's called me to be. I ain't letting it happen. Because I belong to Jesus. He paid for me. And I'm going to serve him. I will not allow fear to rob my faith. Because the enemy doesn't hold the last card. So you don't have to be afraid. Well, you know, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop, Pastor. Things go bad, and my family are notorious for not making it. <laughs> my family's notorious for making bad choices. Up until my dad got saved, I don't know that he ever made a good choice. Or his daddy. Bad, that's just bad. But when my dad chose Jesus, all that junk that followed our family was broken. Now, I had to make some choices, right? Not to go back into it, but the power of it was broken in my life, even though I still had to battle. I don't battle from a weakness. I battle from a strength. I've got high ground on the devil. He's not going to take advantage of me. But y'all, I'm telling you, you've got to make a choice. Something has to settle inside of you. 
You've got to say within you, that's it. I'll either die on this place or I'll go to heaven or I'll win. I ain't stopping. I ain't letting go. I ain't quitting. I'm not letting fear move me. I'm standing on that word. I've done all I can do to stand. Now I'm standing. Devil's going to swing. I'm going to duck and swing back. You ain't got to stand there and take the smack. I mean, if, if I was teaching you how to box, I'd teach you first how to duck. It don't do you no good to throw hands if you get punched every time you throw a fist. You're getting punched too. Because sometimes they even get lucky. Every now and then you need to duck their punch and smack them with yours. That's how the devil is, y'all. Devil's steady, steady coming after you. Duck a punch and throw you on. In the name of Jesus, put the devil where he belongs. Take authority in the name of Jesus. But, but you got to start. you got to start with that place. Jesus told Jairus, fear not, believe only. Until you can get that done, you ain't ever going to move forward. Until you can stop allowing fear to grip you, you're never going to move forward. You're going to always be stuck where you're stuck. But the minute you decide, I'm done with it. I'm, I may not be perfect, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not moving off this spot again unless I'm moving forward. Not going backwards anymore. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Not going backwards anymore, not letting go, not giving up. But I'm going to win this thing because the devil doesn't get to make the final decision. The devil doesn't have any cards he can play against me that's going to trump the cards of God. But everything that God said about me is true. Everything the Word of God says I can have, I can have. And everything contrary to that is a lie from hell. And I make the choice to believe God and not the devil. If you're here today or tonight and you would say, Pastor, I have been battling and fear has always crawled up in my way. The fear of my past, the fear of failure, the fear of never being good enough, the fear of whatever. I battle it all the time, and I'm done giving in to it, and I'm ready to win. Would you just slip your hand up and say, Pastor, that's me. I see the hands. Amen. Just put them up. Amen. Just put them up. Put them back down. I'm not allowing fear to control me ever again, but I'm standing on the truth of God. Is there anybody else? You say, yes, Pastor, that's me. I'm standing on the truth of God. Would you stand your feet all across the building? Heavenly Father, we know that, Lord God, that you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And God, we stand on that truth right now. That, Lord God, we know that we are able, Lord God, to put demons to flight. That, Lord God, demons do not have the right to, to come against us, but we will put them to flight in the name of Jesus. We will bind together and we will make them run. Thousands upon tens of thousands of demons will have to flee when God's people bind together and in faith cast them out. I will not continue in this yo-yo battle with the enemy, with myself, but I put my life under the blood of Jesus and I will not walk out from under it ever again but I commit myself to Jesus Satan we bind you up and we cast you down in the name that is above all names the name of Jesus in the name that my Savior and my Lord my deliverer the name of Jesus oh come on somebody say in the name of Jesus we hold our line we will not let go and we will not be defeated in Jesus' name, amen. Now I want to open up for prayer. If you need prayer for us to believe anything, I want you to make your way up here, and we're going to pray with you right now.